call the meeting to order at 6.01. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> To the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Alright, uh, for those who are here for uh, the public in attendance, we have a sign in sheet. Um, if you want to comment later and on the agenda, and for those who are online, um, you can uh, put your name in the chat um, that we can see and use as a uh, sign in sheet that way. Okay, uh, first order of business is approval of the agenda for motion. I'll make that motion. Cara. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Uh, consent agenda. Uh, is there anything uh, someone would wish to pull out of the consent agenda if you had questions about it, um, or needed to make changes to anything in the consent agenda? I think there's something added for coaching for Middle Cold Springs. John Mark was supposed to be added. Yeah, yeah that's added. That was amended. There's a oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. So I'd be looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, as presented. I'll make that motion. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yes. Uh, superintendent's reports. Uh, everyone uh, should have received. I'm sorry, Eric. Yeah. Should we send some kind of a thank you to Lisa for her generous donation? Oh, yeah. You mean a letter or. Something. What would be appropriate? Um, I guess the letter would be appropriate, or you can just thank her publicly. <laughs> okay. Publicly is fine. Thank you. All right. For the reports, everyone should have. Received all those uh, the superintendents and principals reports. Um, it's informational. So, did anyone from the board have any questions uh, for the superintendent? All right, there are none. And any questions for the principals? Can, can I make another comment? It was sure. a really nice um, advertisement on the back page of one of the sections of the Herald today for Greater Wellington County. I thought it was a well done job. Really? You guys are your schools. Are. Thank you. We're on finance. <laughs> I can give you a few minutes if you like. You can, right, I can I skip around. <laughs> you're, in, you're in the hot seat. Really. All Thank you. 
Yeah. So the updated budget was in the packet. Uh, we're now looking at the uh, third draft of the budget. Uh, there was only a, a few changes since the last draft. Uh, so at the last SU board meeting, the SU board approved um, the PRC SU budget. Uh, there was some. There was no changes to the central office budget uh, at that meeting, so that that assessment stayed the same. But there was a change to the, the special ed budget. It was uh, just one staffing change, so it did increase the budget a little bit. So that is reflected in here and did result in a small increase uh, in in the Wall Springs assessment for special ed. Uh, so that's the first item. Um, the second one, which is a lot larger is the secondary tuition. Um, by this time we would receive bills from hopefully all schools where we tuition out secondary students to, 7 through 12. And uh, as of the last meeting, we still hadn't received uh, some bills, so we were still going on some estimates. Uh, based on the new tuition bills, we did add six new students um, to, our, to our secondary roster. Uh, which is increasing secondary tuition significantly. Um, secondary tuition is now $163,000. Um, so we're seeing a, a lot of move-ins um, that, that weren't there before uh, that's increasing our total secondary enrollment. So right now, um, so those are the two changes that are reflected in this budget. Uh, the other piece, which I just got today, it's not reflected in this budget. Um, which we requested in, in the next month is uh, the vocational numbers. Um, we did get Stafford's tuition. Uh, they're looking at a 6.46% increase in their tuition rate. Uh, on top of that, uh, Wells Springs FTE um, for vocational, they use a six semester rolling average to calculate what your annual cost is. Um, so your FTE did increase, um, I think, this. This semester, you saw a big bump in the number of students attending Stafford. Uh, so that doesn't increase your total cost. Um, like I said, that's not reflected in this budget right now. Uh, but it, because I just got that information today, what we'd be looking at. Uh, so your total local expense for Stafford is going to be thirty-three thousand compared to what's in the budget right now. Is your local piece is 25,000, so that's another 8,000 or so. And then the state piece, the state piece will increase your expense, but it that has no impact on your educational spending um, because there's an uh, offsetting revenue. Um, the, the state, the state portion is 39,000 compared to what's in the budget right now is, is 28,000 dollars. So that's another one. That so um, unfortunately, we're seeing increases um, coming at us from, from all areas, and it's really hard to um, account for all of it and, and keep, uh, keep a steady flat budget. So that's what we're facing, not just at this budget, but um, in other districts in our SU. <clears throat> the state commissioner's letter came out uh, on December 1st. Statewide right now, they're estimating educational spending being up 8.5 percent, which is a pretty substantial number. Uh, so based on that, uh, they did provide some estimates on the yield. Um, I have not put that into this. There's still pieces that were missing before we could really estimate a tax rate. We need to replace people. We need to have CLA. Both pieces we should have at the next by the next meeting. Uh, they're due out to 715. And then once we have all those pieces, we can kind of see how, what the impact is on the tax rate. Uh, but based on the, the estimated increase of the 8.5% um, statewide, they're estimating that the taxpayers' increase is going to be approximately 3.7%. So, and that's based on taking that 8.5% and then using the increases to the yield, which offset tax, taxes. Um, and, and so that, that is assuming that you have a flat equalized pupils and a flat CLA. So those, those two pieces, which are more localized, will influence those numbers either up or down. Um, well, Springs right now is below that 8.5 threshold, so that, I guess that's one, 
ones says that good news, uh, not by a lot, but uh, so right now expense is up by uh, 349, uh, which is 6.4 percent, and education spending is up by 369, which is 7. I know we've talked about ways to mitigate that a little bit, which will I'm sure will pop up tonight again in open session and executive session. Um, so those impacts will will keep we'll lower this a little bit if we make those changes. <clears throat> Any questions? I'd say thanks. I hate I hate the little bit bad news. Uh, the secondary tuition is, is one of those things where we have no absolutely no control over our tuition rate. And we're still estimating three percent tuition rate increase. And we don't know we don't know what the schools are going to do. Um, three percent is typically the average for what you say is the environment. Yeah. Uh, one of your biggest secondary schools um, would be Corey Valley, and uh, they will be the first one there. Announced tuition at the next meeting uh, this month. I am recommending uh, questions. Yeah, so it was that last year was it the state had a surplus that kicked into the School budget is that the yield, or is that something that? Uh, so that is a component of the yield. So they use the yield is that factor which they have all. Um, they take all of the money that we're going to spend education spending statewide, and um, put it pretty much all in a bucket with Act 68, and, and then determine what the yield needs to be in order to to balance that budget um, and equalize taxes across the state. So with that surplus, they bought down the amount of tax, the amount of education spending that was being used um, to, to help increase that yield. As the yield increases, tax rates, local tax rates go down. So I think well, last year they used approximately I think, 33 million. Um, and then they used some for uh, the free food service, um, free for all students. I think that was approximately 29 million. And then they put another chunk of money into other, uh, other programs. So the, the yield estimate that you got, does that include could that potential like surpluses that get reinvested? Um, I don't have the details of that. I believe there is a surplus that is um, being factored into that. It's not quite as large as it was last year. Um, I know I have a, bat, a monthly BATCO meeting where the state will come and talk um, this Friday and give us sort of uh, an update on how realistic that yield that was proposed is and about the 8.5 percent and other other things that are going on in, in today's environment that will impact our tax rates um, so i will know more friday and i know that doesn't really help us today um, but we're not looking at approving the budget today so we do have a little bit more time to to help make decisions. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's not a lot going in our favor this year. I mean, I'm not looking for an exact figure. What are we looking for a total completion of all those the tuition students and stuff like that for the increase in came up with 11,000, 11,000, 11,000. What are we looking at total? For a tax rate? Yeah. Um, I mean, best guess at this point with what our education spending is, based on what kind of the state is using for yield. Um, if we don't, without CLA, but I don't know what CLA is doing, um, I, I would say you're going to probably be around, around 4 or 5%. I mean, I, agree, I hate to guess. And you may know about could you that. could you repeat the question? I didn't hear it at all. So the, the question was what my what my guess would be what we'd be looking at as the tax rate increase. Um, 
But as I said, I mean, we still have some factors that we that are unknown at this point. And the CLA could have a pretty big impact. And for those of you who are not familiar with the CLA, that's a common level of appraisal. Uh, and that's based on how home sales are doing compared to assessed value. Um, and so if home values are selling higher than assessed value, that brings down the CLA and increases property taxes. And so for the last few years, we've seen hot real estate prices prices and selling way above assessed values and starting to come down now but um, I think a lot of the damage has already been done it uses a three-year average so I think we'll have at least two good years not good in our favor but good as far as home values go that are affecting that CLA um, and then if that CLA gets below 80 the town has to do our, our rear trade um, so last year we were looking at CLA's uh, Middletown was 92.61 and Wells was 89. Secondary tuition is 162000 Yeah, a little less than. And then the rest of it is from the SU budget? Or? Uh, no, so um, SU, so about half of it is, is the secondary tuition. Uh, SU budget, <clears throat> special ed is up about 58000 Central office assessment is down by 1100 So you're seeing, uh, but offsetting the assessment, um, let me put it actually to um, the issues impact on Wells Springs. Uh, so the essential office assessment is down by 1100. Special ed is actually down by $2,000 when you net special ed assessment and special ed billbacks. Um, and then the special the regular ed billbacks is down, but that's just a, more of a, uh, a repass from special ed from SU to local. The rest of it, the other half really is health insurance increases, wage increases, um, the two two agreements that we settled last year, as well as um, some non-union increases that we, we will talk about later. Um, health insurance is at 12.7%, which is almost $40,000. Uh, very small increase in, in transportation expense, just based on CPI. Um, so I would say the two major factors are employee benefits and compensation and secondary tuition. Time to yeah, I guess maybe to you, Eric. Is this a good time to talk about um, proposals in terms of guts? There's a first time discussion with that, so but, yeah. yeah. So it just depends on what some of those proposals are. Um, yeah, pertaining to personnel, yes. Right. Um, Does that include food services? No, no, those should actually just have fun. Okay, yeah. So, so I think last session, um, I understand we we're up against um, a timing issue. And I, I, I guess I asked last, last time if we could push back the contract for food services so we could you know, have a Bigger for our discussion on it. So we did we did, did we buy ourselves an extra month? 
for my completed RFP is due to the state by January. Okay. So we were making decisions we didn't necessarily have to make more money, or we can do it and give it to you that first meeting in January. Uh, yes. We mentioned earlier that you weren't necessarily looking for an approval on the budget. Is that correct? I mean, we needed to do it by January. Usually we do it in December. We have that in December. Okay. Was that primarily you're just waiting on final numbers to do? I think with all the stuff going on, I think it would be best to do that. Gotcha. That makes sense. <coughs> all right. So I guess the next piece. I, to say, I think this yield, I'm just looking at it even closer right now with your tax rate calculation thing. This is a pretty significant jump in the yield. Um, so I would, uh, I'd like to hear what they have to say on what the state has to say on Friday to see if this is really doable and what the legislators can go with because when putting this yield into the calculation, it, it, it's not terrible. And that contains like the surplus, and, and that they're going to potentially put it all back into the taxpayers. So they, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, Lewis, a quick question for you. There's a news article about a surplus to, in the Department of Education at 21 million. Is that something that would help to help support? Is this the pool that kind of gets split up to help support schools? Or? If the legislators use that surplus uh, to affect the yield, then yes, that, that's what would uh, impact this. The, the will impact the yield and then impact the tax rates. And they could also decide to use it for other things like food service or uh, other programs that they do like prior to the this year. Um, Know that until the legislators start meeting and decide to have to use those funds. I think the governor's recommendation might be that to refund it all. Okay. All right. So I think no one has any other questions for those pertaining to the third draft. Um, when do they have, um, and then they, when they meet, they have to start meeting. You know, when do they finish and start making decisions on that? Fire? Oh, they don't get on that very quick about like the, the yield is usually one of the last things that's approved. And they said the budget got to be approved. Typically, the yield typically no, I mean, uh, that would make sense. Um, but the yield usually isn't approved until after town meeting. People that's sometimes usually because we have to approve everything before we know what we're yeah, going to so, so you're approving a budget pretty much based on estimates and blindly not knowing that one large factor. I mean, I, I think based on state discussions, we have a pretty good sense as to what the yield will be. And in my experience, at least in the last um, few years, the yield has generally gone Higher than what they talked about, which had, is it's good for schools. Like we don't know when they can do anything they want. We have to put the budget before, right. you know, and they can turn it around the opposite way and make it. Negative. And that's always that's always been the case. Yeah. There's, there's been talk for the years of pushing back down the Okay. Uh, at this time, this is what we're looking at. So there's no depth that we're making a decision on something that we're not even sure. All right, question. Uh, is this an appropriate time to talk about transportation? Or is that an executive session? You know, I, I think the, the, some of the proposals that have been put out to the community around uh, transportation and food service, uh, I think. Those are all I think the only thing that really would be any, any personnel or venues that could discuss that in the second session. Sure. 
So, okay, so I have a question on transportation. I think the outstanding item was we were going to check to see if potentially we could get out of our contract. Yes, there is a clause in our current contract that does allow us to cancel the contract if if there's a change in demand for loss of funding. I was going to say that that's probably I don't know what you had planned, but I think that would be the next um, discussion piece for this budget part would be talk about the uh, food service proposal and changes to. Uh, after school programs. I know, uh, you know, <clears throat> some stuff was tossed around about transportation, but. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I know that there was a lot of things going on at the last meeting, so it's kind of really exciting what's the matter with some of the impact. Okay. Um, if we get rid of the food program, the food service program. Well, not get rid of it. So just change. So change. It. Yes, I'm sorry, change, <laughs> change it. And that effect, um, the effect of this, uh, is this in the circle of the busing. And then uh, what did we do? It was the food service, the busing. Um, one or the other, and then both of them, and then just see what that was. Is that what we came up with? If we change the food service program, what do we say about the third? I don't think we're going to say anything. We talked about approximately 70,000. 70,000. But with what you said, the tuition and stuff like that, we're not doing anything wrong. Well, from what we looked at last time, correct. Amanda? Lewis, I, I could have just missed it, but do you have something stating um, like a better breakdown for our contract with Betia, like cost per driver and what it would look like if we thought about changing that, maybe one bus instead of two, or just throwing some ideas out there? Do we have those numbers? I mean, we don't have, we know what our total contract cost is, and we know that we have two buses. So if we were to go down to one bus, we would just cut that in half. For our, our current transportation cost, I believe we talked about last month, was like $95,000, $98,817. So if we were to eliminate both buses, you would look at total savings. Uh, if you were to eliminate one of those buses, uh, you'd be looking at approximately Forty-seven thousand dollars in savings. Forty-eight thousand. Forty-nine thousand. Okay. I mean, the amount of change. There's two factors that affect that price. I mean, there's there's the cost of the transportation. Um, this is a this is a net cost to the district. We do receive approximately forty-five percent back in reimbursement for our two to from school transportation. So this isn't the actual cost that we're paying back here. Our cost is a lot higher than this. We're receiving revenue from the state, which is offsetting. So the and the transportation revenue does have a lag. Um, so the revenue this year is based on one 2020 revenue, 2020 expense. So if you were to, so as, as you're cutting, you're affecting your future year's revenue. But I mean, if you were to cut just one bus this year, it's it's not an exact. I, I say you cut it in half, but we'd have to look at what the revenue is and what that impact would be. Um, so next year, next year's, um, and it was a two-year line. So we're in FY23, so this is based on FY20, 21 revenue uh, or FY21 expense. So next year's budget, we'd be it would be based on this year's expense. So you take your total expense, you submit that to the state, and um, there's a statewide appropriation, so they look at the total transportation expense for the whole state, and and they compare that to the appropriation. They come up with a percentage, typically around 45 percent. That's what it used to be. It, it may be a little bit slightly different based on how people's transportation expenses have been increasing, um, and then we apply that transportation revenue to the full contract um, to lower everybody's costs. 
and that's only on two from school. So it doesn't affect like your co-curriculars or your after school special ed or anything like that. It will be my, my estimate was about $70,000. Can you summarize those potential changes again? Uh, so currently we run an in-house run food service program. So we hire the staff. Um, we purchase the food. So all of the expenses are flowing directly through Well Springs. Um, we're in charge. We're in charge of the daily operation, hiring, managing staff, or ordering the food. Um, <clears throat> the change would be shifting away from that and going to a vended food service. Um, so our other schools in our SU are on a vended ser food service program. Uh, so what we, that means is that we would um, we're going out to bid this year. Uh, so we go out to bid for a vendor. There's three main vendors in the state. Um, that provide food service to all Vermont schools. Um, once we pick a vendor, they're in charge of, they would have the staff would be on their payroll, they're in charge of hiring, managing staff, um, they're in charge of daily operations, um, they do all the ordering, um, they have all the purchasing contracts, so they get better prices on the ordering, um, they have different, different salary scales, different kind of packages. Um, <clears throat> So that all affects the cost. The other side of that, the other piece of that is that you'd be in a piece of the GRCSU food service program, which is a lot larger program. So right now you're subsidizing your program, I think approximately $90,000 because, because of your size, you're not producing enough meals to cover the labor costs and the food costs, and especially at the, the, the rate that you're paying for those costs. Um, being a part of a larger program, which it does have, um, it's going to have lower salaries um, and, and benefits. So you have savings, the whole program would have savings there. Um, better prices on the foods, you have savings there. But the other piece of that is that um, because they're part of that larger program, all of the schools are feeding into this one bucket. Um, so it, if, if, you're, if you're not covering as much, but the other schools are, covering, are, are making more, that's still all going to the same bucket. If the, if the, Total program ends with a surplus at the end of the year. Everybody's enjoying that surplus. We're not divvying it up based on how many meals one school serves or how many meals the program serves. Um, the GRCSU food service program ended with a surplus last year of $155,000 and 55000 the year for that. And they're estimating that in this year. So where you are subsidizing your program, $90,000, they're, they're running a surplus. So, you would be looking at potentially going from subsidizing your program by 90,000. I'm estimating 70, which is still leaving 20,000 in your budget, um, but it would potentially go down to zero. <clears throat> um, if uh, we made that shift to uh, food service, uh, how does it uh, work for, for students and meals? I can't remember if we had talked about this before at some point, whether it be at SU or, or locally, but uh, so, I mean, can students go back if they're still hungry, or like, how does that work? I, I mean, it should work the same in every school because it's a federal program. So um, right now in the current program that we're in, the first meal is free for everybody. All students are allowed to go back to unlimited times for fruit and vegetables. It's unlimited fruits and vegetables. Uh, for, for any meal that they're purchased or if they're free. Um, but second meals um, would be at a cost, no matter if it was an in-house program or if it was a self-run program. I'm oh, sorry, uh, in-house self-run program or a vending program. <clears throat> uh, you would still have, I, mean, I think all of our schools have a salad bar in some shape or form um, based on the, the schools. Desires, some of them are some are different than others. Um, and you still have, you still have um, Carol and, and Rick will still have management over that staff as far as making um, menu suggestions and setting, uh, helping set that menu or food service times and how the program is run. But they, they are managing it and they're working closely with the administrators. We're closely with the administrators in every school. 
uh, they they would manage the freshman vegetable program if you had if you had that and qualify for that. If you have access to snacks, they they take care of that as well. They work with your they work with, they work with your program staff to make sure that you have everything you need. So, Lewis, just to clarify for people who might not be as familiar, starting next fall, there is no more universal hot lunch funding, correct? That's unknown at this time. Um, the What was passed was a one-year universal meals program, uh, and then it was to be discussed further in this year's legislative session. Um, if the if they do decide to extend it, it's going to be a matter of how they how are they funding it, um, and if they use that surplus or if they use ed funds to, to to fund that, then that's less money they have to go towards uh, increasing that yield. Um, they've also talked about extending it but not funding it and letting that funding be at the local level, which then becomes another item to put into your budget. Um, we are, in order to be in that free meal, they, they put us into a provision two program, which is a program that has been around before universal meals. And it, it's sort of a, um, it, it's a program that allows you to offer free meals to everybody. And it's, so right now we're in a base year. Um, provision two didn't work for our schools in the past because our free and reduced numbers weren't high enough. Uh, so uh, the, the cost was too high to, to really justify uh, unless the board wanted to kick that money in to make universal meals uh, thing. Um, like so we are, we are in the provision two program. So even if the school, or even if the state decided not to extend universal meals, the school could decide to stay in that provision two program and continue to offer free meals and, and then absorb that additional cost uh, to offer free meals to everybody. Amanda? Lewis, do you know on average what the salary difference may look like for the staffing with this switch? Is it a big hourly difference or do we know if it's about the same? Um, I mean, I don't have exact numbers, but I would, I would uh, guesstimate that their salaries are in uh, the mid-teens. And it would be lower than our current salaries. You say you know, what about the, the cost saving is again with the switch? Well, I'm estimating seven thousand. <laughs> Anyone have any other questions? Food service. Oh. I think the the next piece is after school program. You know, uh, what changes uh, could be made that would uh, affect the budget, and um, you know how would it would look, you know, for students and families. I guess. Um, I mean, I think there's, I mean, two main options that the board and the administration can just decide on. It's, I mean, right now you, you run a program that is uh, highly subsidized by the budget. Um, so if the funding was cut for that program, obviously one choice is it's not for the program. Um, the other option would be to have a program that's run solely on parents' pay. Um, and there's two mechanisms for that. There's there's the, the child care subsidy, which is through the state. So for those students that qualify for that child care subsidy, the schools would need to participate in that program. And, and then for those parents that don't qualify for that subsidy, there would be a cost to, to uh, participate in the program. And, and we would need to make sure that that program is self-sustaining so that the money that we're bringing in through that subsidy and that parent payments is enough to fund our staff and, um, 
any other costs associated with your supplies or whatever. So if we had, so sorry. So if we had to, I, I, I think it's really important for the community that we have an after school program. So close to the board of having to cut funding, then you know, use a model like uh, tapestry and um, to make sure that we can provide the support for the families. Yeah. Uh, is there any projections of the uh, canvas tax? Because that's going to go towards after school programming or summer programming. I know we talked about that a little bit last month. Uh, I, I have not heard anything from okay. the, the state or my counterparts on what their estimates are or how that money is going to be applied to those programs, whether they'll be uh, state grants that are offered that will be competitive or whether it will be just a general funding. I don't want to speak to something I just don't have any information on. This, this year is probably the main first year that they're really collecting that. So they may really, I know a lot of times they enact it before they really built how it's going to run. So that they may not even decide how it's going to run. We never did that. <laughs> And I know they said it's focused specifically for after school and summer. I just don't know how they're going to get what you said this person. Amanda? We were also looking at the, the staff to student ratio for after school program as well. Um, last month that we had talked about i don't know if that's actually something we're still looking at or not but i still feel like that's something that we should be looking at more well for us middletown springs we have a license program and uh, meet state requirements and very very precise ratios that we have to stay within and at this point we we are just right at the, the minimum so, um, yeah, there's no access. There hasn't been any access staff in it for at least our program. I don't know about yours. Ours has, ours has been up and down because of the bus issue, where we can never tell how many students are going to be here. So we have a certain amount of people on staff. But moving forward, since we have both buses again, I think it's something we can really look at and analyze it better to have the right ratio of staff there. But it's very difficult because we never know the number. We went from a daily uh, little meeting schedule or one of those things like that to coordinate things to keep all set. So, in other words, instead of every day figuring out, we just had you know, people sign up for the bond for every week. For Middletown Springs, we're pretty consistent. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we ask the parents to give us an idea at the start of the school year, like how many days we're going to be using the program. So it's been pretty, pretty consistent. So, yeah, it really has been a. Okay. I know, like, like the gym membership or like, for example, daycare, um, you pay, even if you're not using it. Um, we went to that model. That was that potential. Absolutely. Right. Definitely. Any other questions about the budget? Do you have anything else, Lewis? Uh, there was the announced tuition in the packet. <clears throat> So each year we have to set an announced tuition for students that are uh, from other districts that are attending our school. Um, so while on that sheet I provided, I showed how your tuition compares to other other districts currently uh, that are our neighboring districts. We currently 
charge $15,000 uh, for elementary school tuition. Typically, we we'll only have anywhere between um, well, zero to, to three students, something like that. And they're typically at Middletown, um, they're Irish students. Maybe occasionally we get another enough student here or there, um, but it's not a lot. Uh, and then preschool tuition, um, which also you periodically get at both schools, that's set by the state, and that's currently um, $3,656. Um, so my recommendation right now is to do, it's approximately a 3% increase, uh, $15,500. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, You're looking for a motion to approve this announced tuition rate of $15,500. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. George first. Any discussion on the announced tuition rate? All right, all those in favor. Approving the announced tuition rate, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries again. All right. And is that it for now? All right. So, in the packet is <clears throat> the survey results from our. Uh, budget survey. Uh, I guess I just did anyone have any questions regarding the survey? Uh, so we had a, a total of 174 responses. Yeah, I don't know what to think of the numbers. I mean, it's it's only a small, <laughs> not a lot, I mean, you know, but it, it's you know, I think um, in in the long run, having some information rather than the, and and I'll say I don't I don't think it's a something that you know we can make a budgetary decision on, uh, but still. Um, but if anyone had any other questions or uh, wanted to bring anything up, now would be the time. Do you have a copy of what the survey looked like before? Yeah. Can I see that? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll give it to you. If you want to read it, I can give it to you later. Yeah. I, I have some here. Yeah. I have a whole stack of them filled out. Fill them out, send it yourself, and get out all your videos. Oh, jeez. I don't have that much time on it. Okay. And these, these would be ordered of priority? Yeah. yeah, those are the response to the questions. No, they're just numbers, I think, basically. They're just numbers. Yeah. Okay. They're not priority. Priority. God, I hope that's not priority. Okay, we'll move on to uh, policy. Uh, so we have two uh, secondary policies, G4 and H3. Um, we look at a uh, motion to adopt these tonight. I'll make that motion. Okay, a motion by Amanda. Any discussion on these two policies? All those in favor of adopting G4 and H3, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Yeah. And then uh, I'll just kind of go over. Uh, we have some new policies in here. Um, so we have uh, G11 public complaints on personnel. Uh, this was brought to the policy committee because uh, we, we don't have a policy that um, really can direct um, uh, people to, I guess, uh, a method of resolving complaints. 
And uh, if this is a new policy, um, if you have any suggestions or uh, recommendations, is this the one that you sent the pages wrong before I sent it back to you? No. This is another one? This is something completely different. Okay. I think you sent back, was it interest or something? No. It was one about personnel, how to rectify a situation. Okay. This looks like it gets this, but back down significantly. It does do any this is a completely new policy. Uh, it's a model uh, VSDA policy. So, and it just kind of, you know, basically kind of outlines the chain of command and well, that's for resolving complaints. But, well, I, have a comment on it. I thought that there, there could be some time element to it because it was, as I, as I write it, it was a complaint to that individual. And if you didn't get anywhere in the supervisor, you didn't get anywhere there in the principal and then the of the board. But if you're a parent and your child's in that situation, um, that might be a lot of time for it to go from point A to point Z. So maybe there's some sort of expectation of how long the process should take between steps. Okay. So, um, Right. Is this about public complaints, not complaints of a parent? Say that again. I feel like this is about public complaints, not like complaints from a parent or a like. I, I'm sure there's other discipline or some, some other type of policy that manages complaints from a parent. Well, I made I made a break. Well, I, I think the policy covers many complaints. I don't think it's specific to parents. It could be, um, you know, and, and it, it does, uh, doesn't specifically say. I mean, I'm not opposed to a timing what? element because I think these things dragging out don't benefit anybody. I just thought it was about public, not parents necessarily. Right. Well, I know some other policies have um, timelines you know, to resolve stuff. Did you have any other suggestions? Yeah, something reasonable like that. All right, we can, we can bring this back a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the other new policy in there is E8. Uh, Max Loan Administration for Opioid Overdose. Um, this was uh, recommended uh, to the committee uh, basically because there's no current policy in place within the GRC Institute. And I guess should the situation arise where it's needed, we have a policy in place. So that, correct. This is uh, Ed Byron School Nurses, Dr. Sable Curious, and uh, actually worked on a couple drafts. This is a big uh, and, and the right. At 26 is a required policy. Uh, this is a new required policy. Uh, it's a Changes in statute. Um, this policy is, is required. So, that would definitely Yes. And then H2, okay, community use of school facilities. Uh, uh, this this policy had gone back and forth. Um, 
at the last committee meeting, um, the uh, majority of the committee said they wanted uh, the language to have uh, all users required them to demonstrate adequate insurance coverage. Um, and then the committee also added the line in there uh, submitting up the liability release and waiver form. Um, so uh, I know this policy has gone a lot of back and forth between having that word uh, shall or may. So, and you know, essentially that would, you know, it, this policy is, is adopted. Um, with, with the way the language is written, anyone who uses a facility will have to demonstrate insurance coverage. Um, Able to do it because they're not picking up their phone insurance. Um, I, you know, I wanted to keep the main opinion, but just one person. Okay, you want to <laughs> who's that? So, go ahead. so I'm thinking, why are we changing it? It's been in there, and uh, so this was uh, speaking of legal, legal recommended that. Yeah, I know what legal would recommend because legal doesn't deal with the public because of so legal. Legal that they said this is a legal recommendation to the committee that to be discussed. So, uh, discussion. I understand that, but I'm also saying that you're throwing a lot of people that could use the facilities that don't have the money to afford the insurance that this is a public space. They should be able to use it. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you. And then, you know, the other element to that too is um, yeah. the Wellston School, particularly, you know, opens its doors to like uh, Lake St. Catherine Association for their meetings and stuff like that. And, you know, with the way it's written, they would have to have insurance coverage just to have a meeting. Um, again, uh, we, we've, we've seen this policy go back and forth. Um, so you don't think you throw back? I'm not, that's not right. Well, you know, I, I think um, we got to find something that works for all districts because the, the, the GRCC policy committee really doesn't want to have um, branching policies where, you know, one work might be. No, they don't work. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it's not right for our school. Correct. Okay. Well, I understand that. So, what you're suggesting is. Go back to me. Gotcha. Anyone else have any comments on H2? I have a question. So, so we, I just went to movie night at the school. Um, is that something that's, that yep. doesn't, doesn't need that sort of. That's an outside organization. It's not a school that sponsors. Yeah, it's yeah. sponsored by. But the school yeah. sponsored, but no. Okay. What happens if it's like a PTO sponsor? School that's it's school 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 school. Cool. Amanda? What if we suggest going back to May and then in that last statement where they crossed out resulting from the use of their facilities, um, if you say like release and waiver form if like required or if requested by the admin like admin like whoever that person may be the principal or whoever like saying if you're asked to provide it when you schedule your meeting or whatever you need to schedule it then you have to provide it but if you say may then it's not needed unless it's requested by the admin for that specific event so all users may be required to demonstrate adequate insurance coverage and shall agree to hold the district harmless from any and all liability by submitting a liability release and waiver form if requested by the admin. And then it pleases the people that want to ask for it, their admin can request it, but it covers the people where it's not needed. Gotcha. Okay.
Okay. Chris, do you feel like that kind of covers the legal piece or? I can't, I'm not going to weigh on a legal issue. Um, so I, I think that's something which we discussed in one um, committee that has a draft of statement I can run by our legal, that the legal account, but uh, I'm not a legal expert. I don't want to weigh on that. Okay. 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 All right. Another yeah, input on H2. Okay. And then don't forget A1 as well. Um, yes, it's A1. Um, on page one, Eric, um, there's a typo in the first paragraph, line three, available to. You say A, you said A1, right? A1. On your policy. And then um, under policy development, when you you crossed out sub and subcommittee thereof, so that would just read committee. Does that mean that any committee of the GRCSU board can make recommendations for policy, or do they only come from the policy committee? Um, well, <coughs> first of all, how do you know I did it? I didn't know you did. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm talking about the policy. Gotcha. No. About the policy. Uh, so, do you want to say policy committee at that point? Yeah, I mean it's it's written in there, but the way the way it was written, it, it says subcommittee, and it just didn't make sense to me. So that's why the the sub was just. Uh, struck out and um, so it says implementation of school board policies in the GRCSU, the GRCSU or or a committee thereof, which is basically the um, policy committee. Okay. That's kind of like how I interpreted it. Yeah, I just I just wondered if that's the case you just put policy committee there. That's all. Yeah. Oh, and then a, a little bit more information on this. But uh, we, we talked about that we have it, uh, another existing policy 8.2, which is uh, policy dissemination, um, administration, and review. Um, and uh, so this this policy here that we're looking at is a like a revised model policy. And it was intended to cover both what we currently have for A1 and A2. And it was overlooked by the policy committee uh, when we first started looking at this. So it, it's confusing. We have two policies that kind of talk about the same thing. So the committee's recommendation is that we combine parts of A1 uh, under policy dissemination, administration, review, uh, dissemination, and try to kind of adopt um, both of those policies into this one, and then uh, you know, should this policy move forward, uh, the recommendation will be to rescind A2. Uh, so, but yeah. And then we added. Um, Suggestions to revisions, you know, uh, just basically what we've been doing for the last year or so uh, in terms of um, policies go out to all the other districts. Uh, and it, for like the first three, they'll come back with suggestions for revisions and move forward. So. All right. Is that everything on policies? Sounds good. We'll, we'll send those back. Um, All right. General public comment. Anyone sign in? <laughs> 
Anyone? Does anyone here wish to speak? Three-minute time limit. We have other business to take care of tonight. Um, does someone want to keep time? Is Mary Plunkett? Hi, I'm Mary Plunkett. Um, I have two kids in Middletown Springs. You might have to get closer to the mic so people can hear you. Sure. <laughs> you mind if I'm Mary Plunkett. Um, I'm with my husband, Chris Plunkett. We have a um, person here in Middletown Springs that can be regarding the So I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I just have a couple questions. So, what we're looking at basically is the increase is based on employee benefits. Employee compensation and secondary expenses for education. Did I get that right? Okay, so the first two employee benefits and employee compensation, that's based on a contract, correct? No, two, two contracts. Okay, two contracts. And is that every two years, every four years? Our current contract for uh, teachers and That, it, it varies. Um, okay. So uh, the, the contracts are going up for, from a year to three or four years, depending on the situation. Okay, great. Uh, so we did just settle the teacher's contract with the four year agreement, which okay. included last year, uh, this year, and two more. And then okay. The four step contract, we also just settled last year, and that was a three year contract. Okay. Now it's for last year, this year, and next year. Okay, great. So that's on the contract basis. So what we can kind of assume is that contracts are going to be less than it is right now. As far as benefits and okay, cool. so it's just kind of important. So the second question really had here was you mentioned you have three vendors would love to answer it for the food services. Um, Aladdin was mentioned like in one of the chess pool ladies. Um, I think Abby Groom was the second, and what what one is Middletown Springs? Well, I think yeah. there's there's three there's three in the state, and then one that uh, the GRCSU contracts with is a lot. Eleven yeah. right now. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. They're actually their name now is not Lexington. They they just changed the names. It was Aladdin. Um. So that's who GRCSU has been with for the last five years. Okay. And we're potentially thinking of switching that vendor to save money. Um. So the st the state requires to go out to bid. Um. We can only have a, a food service contract for one year. Okay. And then we can renew it four times. So a total of five years. So after that five years, we are required to go back out to bid. We may we may have the same vendor when all said and done, or we may have a different vendor. We don't know that at this time. I, I think though, so. just to clarify, I think you're asking, are we presently with that vendor? Yes. And Wells and Middletown are not. We okay. have independent okay, that's food services, and that's where we would potentially go is to be part of the bid. Okay. So presently, we are not with that. Okay, that was my question. Yeah, presently, what would we do if potentially we would go towards a bigger yeah. vendor? Right, and then that yeah. vendor would have more say on compensation for raising employees, yeah. what the kids are being fed. I was just, I was going to just want to interject. You know, if you have all these questions, you can send an email to, okay. you know, to get all this information. Um, and you know, I don't know if you have other. Yeah, so I just have one more statement and we'll be really quick and I'll pass my time on. Okay, great. So my only thing, um, I talked to Eric and a couple other people recently, Patty Kennedy. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that this whole meeting um, is kind of based on the fact that the budget was only passed by 22 votes previously. So um, 
past budget, there was 180, I'm sorry, 483 total votes. Um, 206 was yes, 183 was no. And so that was a 23 vote margin. So I think we're all kind of here focusing on, hey, we want to get a budget that will pass in March. And that was kind of a slim margin. There was also 83 people who didn't weigh in at all. Um, and so they were, um, I'm not sure if had to use the under votes or um, how the technical term, but those 83 people who didn't weigh in at all. And so what that kind of says to me is that they didn't want to vote yes for tax increases. But they also didn't want to vote no for the school budget. Um, so I'm just wondering if we could possibly um, get more information out to the community that may not have kids. Um, in, in schools, because um, they're all voters, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure those 83 people, like I said, didn't want to vote for tax increases, but they also probably didn't want to vote no, you know, down the school budget, which is important. Um, so, just wondering if there's a way we can get more information out to everybody, kind of like the town office does, they put out the budget to everybody. Um, I know that's going to cut into some of the costs or ideas, but um, I've talked to some families, they're willing to pitch in, you know, some cash for, you know, for printouts, we can volunteer to put them in your mailbox, just so when people do go to vote for the school budget, they kind of know what they're going to do. And if there is an increase this year, it is because teachers have a raise, because healthcare costs are going up, because of the secondary um, education budget. So I just think that those 83 people are an interesting um, part of the whole equation of why the budget may have just passed by some majority. Maybe those 83 people they say, hey, if I knew a little bit more, I think I would have, I would have voted yes. You know, or no, but I don't, I don't think we should, you know, hopefully make any cuts until we can put our stuff on. We do send out an annual flyer right before voting day. Right. Which has, I mean, there's only so much information you can put in a, a two-page flyer, but it has some high-level information as well as some information on, uh, or, or points to you in the direction as to where you can find more information. Uh, we do the annual booklets, which we don't mail out just because uh, because of cost, right. uh, but they are available at the town office, uh, usually the libraries and the post office, as well as on, on the GRC issue and, and the school websites. Okay. And so that flyer does have all that information so that we try to get out as much as public as possible, as well as our uh, the monthly meetings and our, and our town meetings. Right. So that, that flyer that you mentioned, is that mailed to every individual <clears throat> yes. family? Or, okay. It's mailed to every household. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Okay, great. Yeah, that was just, I was just thought that 83 votes was interesting. They just didn't pass away at all, so. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Chris Plunkett. She said it all for me. For your support. I think if there's any budget cuts we should take from special educators and after school, Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Scott Hathaway. I'm good. <laughs> I think people are signing up. Oh, they're just signing in that they're here. Okay. All right. Uh, Cynthia Gassett. How things going, Cindy? Good. Well, my class. They'll be sending a couple of your ways in. I know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll turn to anyone online. Uh, Sorry, it took me a minute with my new computer to get get my uh, my mute off. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm I'm just uh, participating today in uh, support of the after school program. We have three children at Middletown Springs, and uh, both my wife and I have full time jobs. And uh, you know, without the after school program that's really not possible uh, so it's it's really critical for us to, to have those jobs uh to have the after school and i think that also if we're 
cutting some of those programs is a short solution for a long term problem. Um, it's certainly not going to grow our tax base in the future. It's going to have younger families coming into the area um, if, if they are coming into an area without uh, support that they need to you know, be able to have their careers to you know pay for the houses or they might have pre pandemic things like that. So you know again I'm I'm in favor of what we can do to support the after school program. Sean, can I ask you a question please? You can. I I support the after school programs. Is there a some is there a point where you, um, you guys, are you from Middletown or Wells? Middletown. Do you, do, would you be willing to pay? I mean, you guys would pay, right, at some point? Yeah, uh, willing to pay. Uh, we have um, one of our one of our kiddos uh, is, uh, is adopted, so there's, I think there's some support that we get for that. But our other two are bio, and uh, yeah, we're willing to pay. I'm also the being on as a basketball coach again for the for the school tonight. So I'm I'm on there for the stipend, but frankly, I was confused. that's like pay for for after school. I you know, that was where I was going to go with that, or and anything that was left over, it was going to get donated to something for the kids. Uh, I I've turned down the stipend in the past as a coach, but I I was doing that this year strictly for that reason. Okay, I'm just curious if you're um what do you not really my business, but what do you pay for the kids and would you be willing to be, would it be uninteresting for you to pay more than what you're paying now? And I'm not talking significantly more, but willing to pay more. Uh, I, what you're to pay? Yeah, I, I, I <coughs> don't remember offhand what we're paying, but no, uh, Jody and I, when we talked about it, yeah, we were both on board with paying for it because, you know, again, it's a question of uh, you know, being able to get jobs <laughs> or have to switch schools if we have um, the after after school support. So uh, she's a uh, assistant super at um, Bill River, and I'm a teacher over at Fairhaven High School. So you know, our days obviously. Um, run over into the after school timing of things. Um, I'm not sure how many of our families here have that to do, but I do know when I when I came to do the coaching tonight for the team, uh, there was a ton of uh, little running around still at um, 4.30. It was new kids, so there is a lot that utilize the uh, program. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm for, I'm okay with the people. Um, I think that the after school uh, that, that handles things um, with our, our youngest, I think that uh, they probably deserve to earn a lot more than whatever it is they're paying they're dealing with uh, with cat <laughs> after school every day. All right, thanks, Sean. Thank All right. So uh, we do have an executive session tonight. Uh, uh, before we move to the executive session, I have to say that uh, we still, our next meeting uh, will be to approve the budget at that meeting. There will be uh, more, more opportunity for input. And uh, if you have any other questions pertaining to the budget, uh, you know, reach out. All our emails are on the PRCC website, and uh, you reach out to the superintendent, building administrators. Uh, um, you know, with that, yes. And then next Monday is our community engagement committee. It's the second Monday every month, um, and that agenda will go up at the end of the week. So, uh, yeah, so look for that. Um, I'm going to share that on the front porch forum.
trying to you know, more awareness for what we're doing. Yeah. Would you meet with the first Monday and the time that I'll throw in your report. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. So we have uh, executive session. Uh, so we're going to make a motion to move into executive session for personnel and contracts. By Sue. Uh, all those in favor, move to executive session at 723. Say aye. 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 Is it the link that Chris just sent? Yes. So it just says January 4th on the link, so I was just checking. Oh, I apologize for the I'll correct that right now, so start. Two seconds. All right. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 I can't remember if I said that. All right, motion carries. <laughs>